for you. Exactly. Not for you. Exactly. The Bible doesn't tell the Bible doesn't tell me who's my neighbor in the Bible. Hey, hey, hey. Step back. No. You You know my step is stepping, this shit can't get hectic. You better check the records about your friends in Memphis. The kid want a crib as big as Texas. We came up wicked, living for intersections. Now I'm in it, wishing for intercession. Summer or winter with a temper of pleasant. Downtown of the trenches, we directed repentance. So you don't need a text nigga to get this. tribes of Israel, the scattered Israelites, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, that they are the true biblical Israelites, right? Um, so what was the what was the question here? We we're talking about the church. You got that? So what is the church? It's the book of Acts, chapter seven, verse thirty-eight. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in Mount Sinai with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give it to us. Right. So the church was in the wilderness. The church is not a, it's not a, not a building or anything of that nature. This is a, it's the body of uh, Israelites is what the church is. Uh, Acts, Acts 7. Come on, come on. It's the body of Christ, right? The body of Christ. Read According it again. The New Testament. Read, it again. Read it again. It's the book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 38. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness this is he that was in the church in the wilderness who was in the wilderness who was in the wilderness read it again for it's the book of acts chapter 7 verse 38 this is he that was in the church in the wilderness the church in the wilderness what wilderness is it talking about? When Jesus, when Jesus went out, when Jesus went out, who was, in, who was in the wilderness in the Bible? Jesus. Jesus was in the wilderness. The Israelites. The Israelites, were the, the Israelites. the Israelites were in the wilderness, right? Yeah, yeah. What happened in the wilderness? They wandered for what? Forty years. Forty years, right? That's what this is talking about. The church is Israel. Israelites are the church. There's not a. There's not some uh, um, a building or a, a, a multi-ethnic church in the Bible. The Israelites are the church. Right. What's your, what's your, what's your question? So, so Jesus didn't come to, to, he did not come to preach the good news to all creation. He didn't. Show me, show me where Jesus said, he, I'm, I'm coming well, to preach to everybody. And he said to them in Mark 16, 15 through 16, go into all the world, go into all the world, go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Whoever, 13. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. So what does that mean? It means going to the world. Whoever believes in the gospel will be will <clears throat> will be saved. All right. So let's check this out. We read something for you. What did he say was going to happen to the Israelites? Where? What did Jesus? What did Jesus say was going to happen to the Israelites? He said he was going to make a new church. Look at Luke twenty-one. So he was going to make a new church. What did Jesus say was going to happen to... I don't know. To tell, me, tell me what he said. Luke 21, 24? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. This is the... What was that question? All right. This is the book of Luke, chapter 21 and verse 24. It says, And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. And the Israelites are going to fall by the edge of the sword. It says and shall be led away captive into all nations. And they're going to be led away captive into all nations. It says, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And the Gentiles are going to be trodden down the land of Israel until their, until their rulership is over. So, read that for them. It's the book of Tobit, chapter 13, verse 3. Now, you may not have the book of Tobit. Say again. Is that, in the, is that in the 66 books of the Holy Bible? Is the Tobit? Bible has 80 books. No, it doesn't. Oh, the Bible has 80 books. So you where, 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 did, where did the uh, the books that we know as the Apocrypha, who took those books out? I don't know. I don't know. 
it was a council, yeah. right? Wasn't a council. Wasn't a council. Council. Mm -mm. Uh, Nathan, Wasn't a council. And this same person who took, who got those books taken out of the canon, he also tried to remove the Book of Hebrews. He tried to remove the Book of James. He tried to remove the Book of Luke. Also, so he he succeeded in getting the apocrypha removed, but he couldn't get the canon to remove a part of the gospel. And James, the brothers, the, uh, uh, Christ's brother. Right? So who am I talking about, do you know? Martin Luther. He's the one that actually got the canon changed. Because he's the father of what? The Protestant church. Come on, Tobit 13. It's the book of Tobit, chapter 13, verse 3. Confess him before the Gentiles. Confess him before the Gentiles, ye children of Israel. For he has scattered us among them because we are scattered amongst the gentiles just like jesus said it was going to happen that's why he said go into all nations and preach because the israelites are scattered amongst the gentiles you're not going to find people from other nations nationalities in the bible being called prophets of god well, or children of god it's not in there let me can i ask what are y'all are y'all do y'all believe in jesus Y'all believe Jesus is Why? who he said he was, right? We already answered that question, absolutely. Okay. Who do you say so, he was? He's the son of God. Oh, he, a, he, he didn't declare that by his own mouth, but he is the son of God. He's the son, he he is the son, son of, of God, he's right? Christ. He, he and who did he say that he was sent for? For, for the sinners. Come for on. the world. The sin of the world. It's yeah. the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He's not sent to anybody except for the Israelites. That, that, that's, that's deceptive. He, really also came, for he also came yeah. for the Gentiles. Read it again for him. What does it say in Read Matthew? Read it again for him. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Read it again for him. He heard you. How about you let him speak? I, I, I know. Yeah, y'all. First, yeah. you don't control anything up here. We're not controlling nothing. I'm what, have, listen, hold on, 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 hold on. You don't control anything up here. I'm asking him to speak and to read this again you make sense of what was just read. We're not going to jump to a different verse. You make you sense of what you may. I understand you that, I mean. but you don't even know all the books. So you can't tell me how to read the Bible. Right. Now, slow down, slow down, control your spirit. Whoa. I'm going to have him read this again. <laughs> you make right. sense of what this is talking about. Hey, look, 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 look. Read look, it look. again. Read, okay, read it again. Read it's the again. book of Matthew chapter uh, 15, verse 24, red letter. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay, now you give me your understanding about what's happening here, and then you can elaborate on it from there. Go ahead. We're going to have to pull out a whole bunch of scriptures, bro. Start All right. here. He's talking about the lost sheep. He is talking about the lost sheep. He did come to the lost sheep. But there's many passages, different passages within the New Testament that talk about him coming to the Gentiles. Go ahead. Paul talks about it in Romans, right? He came to, bro, I, I'm, I ain't got that. Like I said, I don't got too much time. We're going to be here for at least five to six hours. Pull it out. That's great. Pull it out. But I, no, I don't, got, I, I don't got that time. Like, I genuinely, I don't. Like, I, 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 I would love to, but I don't have that type of time. Agree. But no, we're trying to go reach like, everybody because we're trying to go reach everybody. We're, we're here doing I'm we're all here preaching people. the gospel, exactly. People. And that's why Can you're I, preaching I, a false gospel right no, there. That's what I want to ask. Gospel. I was gonna ask, are y'all preaching the gospel? 101? Are y'all preaching salvation? What's the gospel? You tell me, as defined. No, you this, tell me, you tell listen me. to me. I'm curious. I can sit here and teach you all day because I know you don't know what this is talking about. So, what I'm going to ask you is the Messiah, Jesus. He quoted from somebody when he started talking about the gospel, the good news. What, who did he quote? Isaiah. Isaiah what? Do you know? Verses, Isaiah 61. Pull it out. That's why you can read that. Me, Isaiah 61. This is the book of Luke, chapter 4 and verse 17. Mm -hmm. It says, And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Mm -hmm. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Mm -hmm. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, right. to preach deliverance to the captives right. and recovering of sight to the blind, 
to set at liberty them that are bruised. Okay. So he said that that gospel was sent to those particular people. Mm -hmm. Ironically enough, the Bible addresses the Israelites as those people, right? Yeah, it does. I mean, everybody. So now this is what we're going to do. He quoted Isaiah 61, right? He gave a, a snippet. Now let's read Isaiah 61 and see what Isaiah 61 says. It's the book of Isaiah chapter 61, uh, verse 1. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the tiding, good tidings to the meek. Good tidings is to be preached to the meek. Let's go right back to what he was already quoting before. Go ahead. He's not, hold on. He's not going to lie. He's just, let's, let's keep reading it. Good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Right. To proclaim liberty to the captives. Right. To proclaim liberty to the captives. The Israelites are going to be led away captive into all nations, correct? To proclaim liberty to the captives. Go ahead. And the opening of the prison right. to them that are bound. Right. Right. The Israelites are the ones that are bound in prison. It tells you that in Isaiah also. Keep going. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Right. And the day of the vengeance of our God. Right, because this is the day of the vengeance of our God. This is what the gospel is going into. The gospel is not some fluffy, sweet story. The gospel is talking about the redemption of the Israelites, the day of vengeance of the Most High God, and then be redeemed out of their captivity. Right. Let's keep going and see what else the gospel is talking before about. You go on, before you go on, before you go on, man. To comfort all that mourn. Verse 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Just listen. Just listen. Hey, to be honest with you. To be, uh, listen, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You hate the Bible. You hate the Bible. You said something that totally never came out my mouth. Okay. Let me, you repeat uh, the three Ethiopians. same verses over and that. over, bro. Let hey, me get, you're wasting uh, time, bro. The Ethiopians and the Edomites. This is going to do that. We're just going to cut it to the chase. Hey, listen, listen. We're just going to cut it to the chase. Hey, listen, last, last listen. What's the gospel, bro? I, I just read it to you. No, no, if I it's the good news. The gospel is to the good news to the Israelites that they're going to be redeemed out of their captivity. I just God. read it. No, let's keep reading it. Matter of fact, go back. Go back. Go back. Yeah, that's what you want to do is to stop the, the reading. Jesus no, the, Jesus dad. didn't die for your Ethiopian ass. Oh, he ain't died. He didn't he die ain't. for you at all. He oh. didn't die for your Edomite okay. ass either. Okay, bro. Okay, bro. That's what you two you think. Believe in the New yeah. Testament. Y'all think right? that yeah, yeah. we're not here to reach right? either one of y'all two. But I am going to give you guys your justice before we go. Read that. Your your dialogue is over. You know why? Because you were being no, you're being prideful. You know why? Because you're getting cut to the core. You're like, yo, I didn't know that actually said that. You repeated the same verse three times, bro. I'm not. That's not going to change my. Keep on. Hey, you're Ethiopian. Are you an Ethiopian? Are you an Ethiopian? I'm saved by Jesus. Are you an Ethiopian? Did he tell you that he was an Ethiopian? That's all we need. Let's read it. It's the book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 12. Ye Ethiopians, ye Ethiopians also shall be slain by my sword. You're going to be slain by the sword of the Most High God on that day of vengeance. You're not being saved from anything. You're not being saved from anything. Read it again for him. You know, what is, what is love? What is love? What is love? Love is the keeping of the commandments, dumb dumb. You don't even know the Bible. You know why? Because the heathen were never given the Bible. You can't, you can't take this book and you can't read this book and you can't understand this book. All you can do is try to preach your filthy gospel that's not the gospel that's reading this talk inside this book. No, I hate you because you I hate you. I love you, and I hate you because what you did to our people also. You would find, bye bye. You would find Christ, really, really. Keep going. Like, real, really, yeah. Yeah. Really it's it's the book lost. of Zephyr. And he wouldn't. So who did Jesus call a dog? Who did Jesus call a dog? Who did Jesus call a dog? Jesus called the woman as a gentile, but listen. He called her a dog. Why did he call her a dog? Listen. Why did he call her a dog? Why did he call her a dog? Talk, bro. Why did he call her a dog? Talk, bro. Why did he call her a dog? Talk, 
Tell, tell me this. Answer why me. did he call her a dog? You know why? You know why? Because y'all get the crumbs, but this love and this understanding is for the children. It's not for y'all. It's not for y'all. I have no love for you. Exactly. Not for you. The Bible doesn't tell. The Bible doesn't tell me who's my neighbor in the Bible. Hey, hey, step back. No. You It's the book of Zephaniah, of chapter the 2, verse 12. Hey, you Ethiopians God. also, ye God. shall be slain God. by God. my sword. God. You God. Ethiopians God. shall be God. slain God. by the sword. I love, I love the children of God. What? This is the book God. of Revelation, God. chapter 13, and verse 10. It says, he that leadeth well, into simple, captivity simple, simple, simple shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Hey, we are patiently waiting for the day that we can all get back with our enemies. That's right. We're not trying to save enemies from anything. Right, right. I love my brothers. That's all the Bible tells me and commands me that I have to love. That's right. It's my brothers. Not some filthy heathen. Right. Read that. It's the book of Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 18. Right. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire. That's right. He just got a taste of what a fire felt like. Right. Right. The house of Jacob is going to be a fire. And the house of Joseph a flame. Right. And the house of Esau for stubble. That's right. And they shall kindle in them and devour them right we're going to kindle in them and devour them they don't want to read the bible let's go back to the gospel let's go back. right we're going to start at the top uh -uh. 61 uh verse 3. Yep. Yeah. the book of isaiah chapter 61 verse 3 to appoint unto them that mourn in zion right see the problem is the heathen have always tried to come in and claim our heritage right, right? the bible tells me to a that this gospel is to them that mourn in Zion. Right. Right? You tell me when the heathen would ever call, would ever call Zion, Jerusalem, Israel, right? Children of God. Tell me and show me when. It's never happened. It's never happened. You don't even have to really say much, right? And that's just, that, I'm going to be honest with you, that's a, that's a cut on me because every time I got, I got fired up with him, he came back. When he heard the words, he wanted to walk away, right? When he heard the words, he wanted to walk away. But when he let me get, he, when he got me out of my, my space, he was ready to come on back, wanted to get this. When the words started coming back out, he was reading, then it's, oh, it's time to go. He didn't want to hear that. Right. Right. Let's keep reading. To give unto them beauty for ashes, right. the oil of joy for mourning, right. the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Right that they might be called trees of righteousness. Right, it's for Israel to be called trees of righteousness. Keep going. The planting of the Lord, right. that he might be glorified. Right, it's so that the Most High God can be glorified. See, Israel went off, started sinning, right? They, they shamed the Most High's name amongst the heathen. Now they're repenting and coming back to who they are, keeping the commandments, and he's going to redeem them. And that's how his name is going to be glorified around the whole right. earth. Right? This was never meant and never taught to the to the heathen a, 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 a salvation or a redemption. There's no such thing. Keep going. Verse 4. And they shall build the old waste. We're going to build the old waste. Go ahead. They shall raise up the former desolation. Right? Didn't, didn't, uh, didn't Jesus tell us? Didn't uh, uh, the man we know as Yahawashai, his real name in the ancient Hebrew, didn't he say that the Israelites were going to be led away captive into all nations and that the Gentiles were going to trodden down the land until the end? Read that again. Verse 4, and they shall build the old waste. Right, the waste that the heathen trodden down, which was our land, we're going to rebuild it. Keep going. And they shall raise up the former desolations. Right. And they shall repair the waste cities, right. the desolations of many, us, right. Slaki, of many generations. Right. Verse 5. And strangers and shall. Hold on, hold on, hold on. See, he wants the strangers and the non Israelites to be saved. That's what he wants. 
That's what they want because they understand what the Bible says and what's going to happen to them for what they did and what their forefathers did to the children of Israel. They know. They know. And it's burning them up because they're trying to find a way how to, how, to, how to slide in, but you can't. The Most High God's word does not go out and come back void. He's not a liar. It's going to play out the way he said it's going to play out. Read that one more time. And the strangers shall stand and feed your flock. The strangers are the ones that, that are going to stand and feed our flocks. My children are not going to be out there in the field feeding no animals. Right. My children are not going to be out in the field working the field. Building. We are, yeah, like, like the war dog said, been there, done that. Our ancestors have already done enough. We got a job to do right now, which is to come back to the Most High God and keep his commandments. Right. Take hold of that heritage that we have. Right? And just like uh, was that in, uh, in, uh, in Ezra, right? What do you have to do to build this house? This ain't, this ain't got nothing to do with y'all. Right? This, what, this has nothing to do with the heathen. Right. You guys are not going to, you guys are not going to uh, come and, uh, uh, and be a part of our family. You're just going to do the work.